If you're not familiar with web components, you can think of them as a way to provide custom elements in HTML. Because they work just like regular elements, they provide a very nice way to have stateful UI components without having to wire up a lot of state management just to get them. You can think of Elm MDL here. I love it, but it is a bit verbose. Let's have a look at how web components can cut down on typing. I've started out with the project Elm Web Components Playground, which I've linked to in the resources, tagged before this episode, uh, before episode 030.2 is the tag. This is a basic Elm application with an initial web component setup. I've included steps at the bottom of the script showing how I started it. Let's look at the index.html file and talk about a few things. So it's in source index.html. Okay, so right here we pull in, well, so first off, this thing right here is important if you want it to look right on mobile. Uh, it's just a good thing to know. Here we're pulling in the web components JS uh, from our Bower components. And this is a polyfill for Shadow DOM stuff. This next bit is super duper important and uh, it took me a while to figure out and basically I found it on a mailing list thread with the help of Richard Feldman. So basically you need to use Shadow DOM in Polymer or else things like nested web components don't work right in some situations in very strange but awful ways. Basically no children render whatsoever. Then we pull in Polymer with an import link. So there's a link, relationship is import and it just points to an HTML file. So this last thing, the import link tag, is the core of web components. I won't dig in too terribly deep since I hope you did some reading up on them yesterday, but you can think of this sort of like a require statement in another programming language. It pulls in this code and executes it, which ultimately gives us a web component. Our app doesn't look terribly exciting yet. Uh, let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so I'm using LMAP here. So I just run LMAP start and it starts the server and builds things. And so then I'll come to Brave here. I'm gonna retry the URL. And my LMAP is working. You can see that it's running and, and things are good. So it'll continue to do a hot module reloading for me there. Okay, so the point is the app is not terribly exciting yet, right? It says your LMAP is working, which while nice that it's working, not exciting. Okay, so back here. Let's make some nice things happen and we can make them happen pretty quickly. So let's have a look. Uh, first, we're gonna bring in the paper input component and this is a material design component for input tags. So we'll install it from Bower. So we just Bower install paper dash input and save them. Okay. Next, we import it into our HTML file. So I'm just going to copy paste this line, go to Polymer, and we'll say paper dash input slash paper dash input dot HTML. And from here we can just use it. So let's open up our Elm app, which is in app.elm because I'm using create Elm app here. And I need to bring in Node because we make nodes of a particular type. So Node lets you make a node, uh, HTML node of arbitrary type. And so now we can come down here into our view and kind of pretty it up a little bit. And after our text, I'm going to make a node. It's going to be a paper input node with nothing in it. No attributes or anything. So now we can have a look. And it should have reloaded. I, it didn't auto reload, but I, I hit refresh. Okay, so now we have an input, and it's a little bit better than a normal input. You can see that it kind of has this animation going. So that requires some internal state or CSS trickery. Uh, not really sure which of the two. So that's pretty nice. But aside from the underline, this is this is very unexciting, right? So let's add a label to it with an attribute. And so this is a sort of custom thing. So we'll come in here. And we'll make an attribute. I need to come up here and I need to import HTML.attributes. And I need to expose attribute, which again lets us make an arbitrary attribute. And so now we'll make an attribute, call it label. And the label will be username. And so this is an attribute that the paper input knows about. You can read in the documentation to see which attributes it cares about. But now if we look, there's a label called username. And when I type, it does that nice kind of kind of animation thing, right? So kill it. Type, kill it, neat. There are a lot more attributes that you can use from the component, but that's enough for now. So next, let's add a nice button with a ripple. So we'll bring in the component. So just again, we'll Bower install, instead of paper input, we'll install paper button. Again, I'll open up index.html, and it's paper button. And we'll add a button, so we'll go to app.elm. And we're going to wrap our button in a div just so that we get a new line uh, after the paper input. So make a div, 
Inside of it, we'll make a node that's a paper button. Has the text inside of the button, says clicky. And I need to close that list. Okay. So if we have a look now, we have a button. Uh, it's not, not working. Uh, did I forget or fail in some way when I typed? Let me refresh and just make sure. Ah, I need to refresh so that it pulled in the, the shell again. Anyway, so that works. So now when I click the button, I get a nice ripple effect. So we can set it to be raised. And so to do that, we just set an attribute. So we say attribute raised. And this attribute, if you look at the spec for paper button, is supposed to look like um, kind of like this if you were in uh, HTML. Right, but we just do that by setting an attribute raised with the same value. And there may be a better way to do this. Uh, if there is, I'm not yet privy to it. Anyway, but if we look now, we can see that it's a raised button. And so finally, we can make it colored. So I'll pull in the style attribute. And my style will be, I have the background will be a particular color. And this is just one that I think looks nice. And then we'll say the color, which is the text color, will be white. And there we go. And the way this ripple works is it, it you know, uses the background color to decide kind of how the ripple looks. All right, so with that, we got some pretty good material design styles in very few lines of code. We didn't have to add any new messages to our app. We didn't have to remember to set up any initialization or subscriptions. Uh, we didn't have to keep track of the indexes we used for buttons and text fields and kind of track that across our whole app. More importantly, we get to use the normal Elm HTML functions, and everything just works like we'd expect. So in today's episode, we saw a very rapid introduction to using web components in Elm. We get the niceties of material design with less hassle than using Elm MDL provides. Also, we now have access to a whole range of useful components out of the box that we can interact with easily. We've connected Elm to the entire web components ecosystem, which means we have more than just Elm developers helping build the components we use. This is a good thing. What we don't have is type safety in terms of what options we pass to these components. So in Elm MDL, we're safe from using components in a way they're not meant to be used, like maybe putting a label on something that doesn't accept a label. I don't know. And that's because the type system saves us. So I think the best world might be using web components, but maybe wrapping them in some types gradually to help us use them well. So that way we get the best of the outside world, but in an Elmy embrace. I hope you enjoyed it. See you soon.